Welcome to Everything Money. GE is splitting into three separate companies, aviation, healthcare, and energy. We will use our Everything Money software to show you the financials behind this 100-year-old company to see where they're headed, what kind of money they make, and should you be investing in this. This is exciting, and we'll see where it goes. We will use our stock analyzer tool to predict what you should be paying for GE moving forward. And if you want to tr trade this, it's been a chaotic day on the market with this announcement, Mo. So if you want to catch these highs and lows in trading, you can look at the charts and trends with Mo in the Binance Nation. That'll be at the end of the video, so please stay tuned. In essence, why should you be listening to us? Well, we're freaking awesome. That's one. Of course, I'm deadly handsome. You know that. But in general, I asked these two guys about exciting announcements like this. These two fellows own and operate over a hundred million dollars in real estate stocks and businesses and they will give you their thoughts on GE splitting up. Paul, give us your thoughts on this company. What an amazing company founded by Thomas Edison. I love it. Warren Buffett always loves this company. What do you think about I, this? Is well, this not a Warren Buffett company? I don't think so. I don't think he has shares in this company. Keep going. Guys, follow us on Instagram. We have a new Instagram account and then follow for everything money and then follow us personally as well. Really helps out a lot. So Guys, GE is, this is our Everything Money software. Let's go to GE, General Electric. Oh, we did buy three billion of it. Oh, oh no, Paul, that was a long, long time. Yeah, ago. I don't think it's I think I was reading, you know why? Because I was watching old Warren Buffett videos. He's talking about GE. Keep going. So guys, the market kept $121 billion. They lost 40 million last year. They have no five-year PE because they've lost. This is all over the board, just crazy. So let's go to the income statement. I'm just going to skip ahead of the income statement. Their revenue is down in half from 10 years ago. They've been selling off divisions of the company over and over. Their profit over the last five, look at this, a $34 billion loss four years ago. That was assuredly a write down. Let's see. Other income expenses, $25 billion write down there. Special income charges, another $22.5 billion. Guys, this company is hard. Oh my God, look at their shares outstanding because they sold so many things off. Oh, wow. So guys, I'm going to skip ahead as eight pillars. Look how ugly this is. This is ugly. And the 87.5% decrease in shares, they probably just retired them from selling off some division and retiring them or something like that. Yeah. I don't know what the reason is. And yeah, this is funny, Paul. Since 2018, the, 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 the new CEO, he sold off assets, restructured the business. Which I like, by the way. To cut costs, lower GE's massive debt pile up in 2016, sold its appliance business to Chinese. Uh, he even sold the, uh, the light bulb business. There's a lot of changes going on. And so what do you think they're doing splitting up? I mean, their aim is to serve more people, but is this a publicity stunt? Well, what's the story here? So first off, look at their debt level. 10 years ago, 360 billion. Last year, ended at 160. So GE, I think, is a company. The reason I like what the CEO is doing, I know nothing about the CEO, guys. I don't know if he's a good guy, bad guy. I don't like it when people just immediately go, let's go cut costs. GE had their arm in so many different things. Finance was one of them. GE Finance, GE Capital was a big business that got hurt in the financial meltdown. They wanted to sit there and say, let's go focus on the divisions that we want to focus on, right? So they sat there and started selling off divisions. Let's sell this off. Let's sell this off, pay off debt. Get us to a point where we can now do what they're doing now, which is splitting their company into three different pieces. Now, is that the right thing to do? I don't know. It might be, but usually the individual is worth more than all the individual parts put together. Yeah, and in, in early 2001, at its height, the stock was worth more than $500 billion, which made GE one of the most valuable companies on the planet. Now what's left, it's only worth $120 billion, 23% of its former value. They got kicked out of uh, the Dow. It's a, they did reverse 8 to 1 split. Uh, Look at this, Seth. Go on. Oh, oh, there you go. 2000 chart. If I told you that the biggest company in the world in 2000 would be selling for 75%, 80% lower 20 years later, what would you have told me? Yeah, what we try to educate you guys folks is, is like if there was a youtube around at that peak up there that paul's pointing to you there would have been all those face melt face melting fire emoji thumbnails about how ge was the biggest and best thing ever and sure enough it's not always the case it's actually not even much higher than 2008 crash got as low as 56 but now it's higher it's double that's very misleading because of the chart guys ge is a complicated business I avoid GE because of that reason. I don't like the fact that I don't understand their individual businesses. Their free cash flow over the last, look at their free cash flow over the last 10 years, ranged from a loss of 9.4 billion to a gain of 26.8 billion, all wide ranging. 
This is so all across the board. They've sold off division after division after division, after all these things, and now their free cash flow was a mere $1.6 billion last year. I just sit there and say, too complicated. I don't understand it. I cannot project what the future is going to hold. I avoid. Regardless of what this company's doing from a long-term perspective, these the, when news stories like this hit, you can catch these runs and there is money to be made at a quicker pace if you want to trade. You can join the BidNest Nation. We'll talk about our software in our community in a minute, but you can join Mo and he will guide you through these trades. Mo, I saw up 17% pre-market. What, what's going on over there with GE? Show me the charts. So this is a long-term chart and I want to show you this because this is going back to 2018. You're, you have not been able to get through this resistance point that it's sitting at right now. Basically, it's at 111 probably $115 is that resistance point. You have not gotten through there for multiple years in a row. So don't try to fight it. Go over here to a, to a uh, swing trading chart. This thing opened up today somewhere around this $116 range, this massive influx of volume. I would ex and we are and right now we're down here at 11, uh, $111.50. What I think is going to happen is this thing is going to sell off in the next coming days, and this is going to turn on you, and you have a great opportunity to short this thing. This is a dra dramatic overreaction to something that's not even going to happen until 2023, 2024, and take advantage of it. So take advantage of it from a swing trading perspective day-to-day -day, and from a 15-minute chart perspective. And if you want to learn to day trade, come and learn with me in the BidNest Nation. You get all of my seminars, all of my teaching, um, teaching lessons, everything. Come to the BidNest Nation. Paul, with all this chaos involving GE, is there is there a a plausible way to see what you should be paying for this company moving I, forward? There's there's no understanding of the numbers, in my opinion, where I had to do way more research. And to me, if there are 10,000 stocks, other stocks out there, I'm just going to focus on those. If you want to join the community and have the software behind Paul, you can have it in the palm of your hand right now, and Paul's going to walk you through those steps. So guys, we made this software because our users wanted to have access to be able to do their own research without waiting for us to make videos. So we made the software. You get everything you saw there. You get everything on this main page that's coming soon. You get all news, our YouTube videos. You get it all in an app, in app form. You get two or three exclusive videos a day through our software and through our app. You get access to Seth Moe and I, but most importantly, if you felt like you're on an island, there are 6,000 other people in our chat in an organized way, dozens of chat rooms talking about specific topics. You can discuss your ideas with them. This is all for only 90 cents per day. Less than a crappy cup of coffee, you can have this software. And if you're just able to use it to increase your returns by 1% or 2% a year, this will pay you off hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in the long run for only 90 cents per day. It is a no-brainer. Go to everythingmoney.com or Patreon. The benefit of everythingmoney.com is no sales tax yet because we're not big enough and you don't get double charged in the first month. Again, guys, this is no-brainer. 50, 60 people are signing up per day. This is absolutely incredible. Paul, deep down, when GE doesn't do well, I sort of feel sad, like the American in me, this iconic company. It's it's sad to see everything yeah. that's going on with it. You know, I know, I just, it's unfortunate, but that's what happens when businesses are... This is what I don't like about American, the way the American company, like European companies, they look at the long term more. American companies are all about what's today, what's today, what's today. You know, Jack Welsh, he's given a lot of credit for GE, but I think he just got lucky because of timing. He was a CEO at the right time. But when the economy was booming, GE was booming. He literally stepped down. I think Jeffrey Immelt took over GE the day before 9-11. Can somebody verify that for me? I believe it was September 10, 2001. He took over. And he got bashed. for. But I think it was just good timing on Jack Welsh and Jeffrey Immelt. It's probably bad timing for Jeffrey Immelt. You still have to look at these companies and say... Sometimes companies just grow to grow because they need to keep up with investor satisfaction because all everybody out there is going to say, well, why aren't they growing? It's okay for coming out to grow. They can still do well for their investors if you buy at the right price. So have we found out the, the date yet? I could have sworn it was the day yeah, of or the day man, after. You're, 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 you're right, Paul. It's September when? Yep, yeah, September Boom. 10th. Look at that. The next day. I remember reading like he was on a treadmill working out when 9-11 happened. It was the second day on the job. Boy, that's pretty nice. Second hand job working out. He sounds like me. Look at you go. So it is kind of sad that General Electric has this, but guess what? This could be the best thing for the future. This could be a good way for them to restructure and say, okay, we're going to focus on what we do best, which is doing this, this, and this. Let's go make it happen. Let's go make a lot of money for our investors. That's I'm, great. I'm certain this company has overcome a lot of things in the past 120 years. So uh, we like 
we like older, more established companies because they, they they probably have the chops to withstand some some um, turbulence on the way. And so we'll see what they make GE, jet engines too. Yeah, we'll see what uh, GE can do, and we'll certainly update you on this company and stock moving forward. That's our take. Join the community below. Fondle the thumbs up. Thanks for watching the fastest growing YouTube channel, financial channel out there. We love you. Appreciate it.